What does it mean to be gifted? Like many, you may think it's having an exceptionally high IQ or being a child prodigy. And while it's true that people who fall under these categories can be considered gifted, it's also time you realize that there are actually many different types of giftedness that tend to get overlooked and undervalued. First studied by researchers George Betts and Maureen Nyhart in their 1988 article, Profiles of the Gifted and Talented. They identified six different types of gifted individuals according to their behaviors, feelings, and needs. Curious to know which type you are? Well, here are six types of gifted people. Number one, the successful type. Type ones are the most commonly recognized type of gifted individuals. They are those we've typically come to associate with the term because of their impressive academic performances and prestigious achievements. Most type ones become even more driven to excel because of the high expectations placed upon them at a long age by their parents, teachers, and peers. However, at the same time, some type ones can become bored with school and lose their passion for learning because they feel like their giftedness has become their entire identity. This happens because many parents and teachers make the mistake of focusing too much on developing their intelligence, talents, and skills that it stunts their personal, social, and emotional growth, making them competent but unimaginative and ill-adjusted adults. Number two, the challenging type. Next, we have the second type of giftedness known as the challenging type. Type twos are labeled as such because they are often unafraid of challenging others and questioning authority. Highly creative, tenacious, and unconventional, type twos tend to think outside the box so much that it sometimes makes them difficult to get along with because of how disruptive and non-conforming they can be. Often receiving little to no recognition for their giftedness, many type twos feel frustrated with the school setting because it stifles their creativity, overlooks their abilities, and keeps them from realizing their full potential. If they don't have a support system in place or have other positive influences in their life, it's likely for type twos to develop delinquent behaviors or eventually drop out of school. Number three, the underground type. Type threes, also called the underground types, are gifted individuals who want to try to hide their giftedness from others. This may be because they want to feel more included in a non-gifted peer group, feel too much pressure to excel, or dislike the intense scrutiny and attention that giftedness often brings. Those who don't manifest their giftedness until late childhood or early adolescence tend to fall into this category, most likely because that is the age when the desire for belongingness and social approval typically starts to intensify. As a result of denying their full capabilities, they may end up feeling insecure and anxious. To remedy this, type threes need a lot of encouragement and understanding, not only from their parents and teachers, but also from their peers. Number four, the dropout type. Another type of gifted individual most people are unaware of is type fours, also known as the dropout types, or the at-risk types. Type fours tend to have a reputation and are labeled as such because they often struggle with feelings of anger, frustration, and depression as a result of their giftedness being overlooked. Similar to type twos, type fours struggle with their self-esteem because they feel rejected and unappreciated by others. Since their interests, skills, and talents don't align with the typical school curriculum, they don't receive the support and affirmation they need from the people around them. Number five, the double-labeled type. The fifth type of giftedness is the double-labeled type, which refers to gifted individuals who have a physical or emotional handicap of some sort. Most have learning disabilities such as dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, and so on which can make it difficult for school systems and programs to identify them as gifted. Their handicap may also make it more difficult for them to complete their work on time or to fulfill other structured tasks as easily as other gifted students, which can make them more easily discouraged, frustrated, and critical of themselves. Type fives may also be impatient, stubborn, and sensitive to criticism, which only makes it more important that they're given the proper assistance to nurture their strengths and talents. And number six, the autonomous type. Last, but certainly not least, we have the autonomous type, which refers to those gifted individuals who are independent, conscientious, and self-reliant. Similar to type ones, type sixes often find success and recognition because they have learned how to excel in the school setting or have found ways to make the system work for them. Resourceful and goal-oriented, they are natural-born leaders and are well-respected by those around them. And unlike most other types, type sixes often are aware that they're gifted. However, because they have such a strong sense of personal power, they are never preoccupied with impressing other people, gaining their approval, or fitting in with their peers. So which type did you relate to the most? Do you relate to more than one type? 
Let us know in the comments below. The references and studies used in this video are added in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.